Today I'm gonna start trying to make the go kart a little bit faster, just by doing or attempting to port and polish maybe a little bit intake and get the exhaust boomed a bit. I know the gasket that goes from the carburetor to the intake is a little bit rough, so clean that up too. Just you know, the engine is an air pump. The less restriction it has, the more power you'll get. Um, this is how I'm going to test my power because you know I don't have a dyno or anything to put this thing on. I have this track going around here. And so far my fastest time around it is, or my average time is uh, 18 seconds and 18 seconds and one tenth of a second pretty much. Um, but my fastest time was 17 and a half seconds. So I'm going to start modifying a bit and then to see if it gets any faster. First thing I'm going to have to do is um, pull the carburetor off. Right there, pull the whole carburetor off. I'm gonna try to clean up this gasket that's here because it's just a cut to fit gasket. Um, I'm gonna pull the intake off and try to open up that passage a bit and take the exhaust off. And it's barely even on there to begin with. I'm not even sure it's holding it on at this point. It might just be that bolt right there. But yeah, I'm gonna be pulling that off. I'm gonna find it, have to find another way to anchor this spring that's holding the throttle closed. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Now, uh, this is the gasket I made for the carburetor. As you can see, it looks absolutely terrible. Um, but what I've done is the gasket kind of stuck to the carburetor as I came out. So to use that to my advantage, I took one of the bolts holding the carburetor to the intake and put it on to hold the carburetor gasket in place while I cut it out and reshape it to make it flow a little bit better. So that's something you can do if you're, I mean, if the gasket still wants to stay on there and everything, you can easily do that and it'll make your life much better. As you can see, I cleaned it up quite a bit. I also beveled the edges just a bit to maybe add some velocity to it. Um, that means I'm also going to have to expand the intake just a little bit. One thing I was going to say about this is that um, I put a rag on top of the butterfly, not a big rag at all because it's tiny, but just to try to catch any major debris that will try to fly down into the carburetor. So that's what you want to do. Also, whenever you go to the intake, one thing you're trying to do is you can see the sharp edge that is right Let's see if I can put my finger on it, but it it's where the the flow goes in and then it curves that way. And there's a sharp edge right there. And you want to try to knock that down because that is a restriction in the intake. But you want to take the intake off before you do that. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Now this is the before and this is the after. Although I'm not done completely I still want to smooth everything down so there's not big edges in there which also causes a restriction. I also want to mention that right here on this side that bolts to the head you can actually see the dark area around the, the intake is actually area where the gasket is not covering so you can pull that out just a bit cut out material to smooth it out with the gasket and that will also help with your flow. This is after I've sanded it down a bit. It still doesn't look great, especially because you can see the pitting on the inside of there. But you can see, I mean, you can almost see right down the intake with the angle I put on. There's also a lip that was right on the bottom and top of each side, and I've knocked that down to even. Now it's just a smooth flow right up to the head. Next thing I'm going to do is knock back the amount that doesn't have to be there. And then also do the same to the head. Right here, as you can see, it doesn't look quite as good, but I knocked back a little bit on the head too. I had the gasket on there also just to ensure that the gasket wouldn't interfere with any flow either. So I'm going to put the intake back on and put it all back together and drive it. Minus the muffler because it was already, seemed like it was destroying the threads with how it was held on there. And it wasn't even really doing much except probably... Reducing flow, so I'm gonna go without that for now. Now I actually forgot to record a video of me going around the track um, to show the the time, but I will say that um, 
I did record the time. I do a video of me going around the track, and that's how I used to to get the time. But I don't have a video, you know, where it's like up top and you can see me going around to time it. I actually just had it a point closed off, and once I passed that point, that's whenever our, the time stopped. So my uh, what actually happened was I lowered my time from 18.1 to 17.7 seconds around the track. Now is my average time, but my fastest time stayed the same. So I don't know what that has to say. Maybe I just got better at going around the track, or I mean I can definitely feel more uh, response in the low end. I didn't feel like the engine had to build up quite as much momentum to have the torque to push. But I, I think it definitely helped, but I just didn't see a uh, an increase in the the fastest time. I was just more consi I was consistently more fast than before where I just got 17.5 once. This time I got 17.5 probably about two times, three times, but almost all my times were below 18. So I think it says that, I mean it did affect it, but maybe it's just the, the sprocket ratio that kept it from being much faster. But I just thought I'd let you know the outcome of the video. So. Um, Thanks for watching. If you guys liked it, leave a like. That helps out. Uh, comment if you have anything to say. I'd like to hear from you guys. Just let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.